tonight. If it has been talked about. <coughs> Modern art. Yeah. This is in a response to, in response to um, well, Ms. Ms. Dees, um, partly Ms. Dees article on the TED Talks you can see on YouTube discussing why, um, yeah, discussing modern art and people's reactions to it. And, um, I just want to, in the context of a talk on modern art, it behoves one to talk about modern art, at least for about a hundred years, seems to have to be all mixed up with uh, gay rights and similar um, type social political issues. And there's a lot of parallels between there's a lot of parallels between the gay rights um, political movement and the um, modern art movements. Um, a lot of people have no. I've, I've been um, talking about on YouTube. And other places, radio talking about modern art and the turn that modern art has taken for what seems to be just degeneracy. And there are people like Deeth who try to act as apologists for modern conceptual art. Um, uh, But um, what, what, generally speaking, it has to be to define terms. It has to be noted that modern <clears throat> modern art, to a lot of in a lot of ways, seems to be necessarily involves some kind of minimalism, some kind of minimalistic use of of media, um, raw media, um, sort of unfinished stones, raw unfinished stones if you will, um, you know, um, simple, well I mean analogy is like the use of simple slabs of Timber instead of having instead of having a, a carved Victorian style kitchen, say kitchen bench top with routed ends, with moulded ends, and um, turn leg tables, and as a sort of um, minimalism, as a sort of revolt against cluttered Victoriana. Uh, has been around for about a, you know, about at least a hundred years, um, and minimalism does give a designer fewer options in the sense of um, carvings, decoration. Um, uh, yeah, not many buildings these days, not many houses and buildings these days are, 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 they're very, they're quite minimalistic, even if they're passed off as traditional style, you know, traditional style brick or timber house with, um, with a veranda and, um, you know, a minimum of, um, a, you know, a bit of tasteful decoration. That's regarded as de rigueur these days, but no one does busy things like they did in the, the Victorian era. 
Um, uh, not many people these days. Um, and this is the um, when people say modern is applied to modern art, they very often mean minimalist. Um, and that could be minimalist like Frank Lloyd Wright's houses from a hundred years ago. They were you know, very sparse, beautiful, and they necessarily showed off the the, the just the natural beauty of the materials. Um, and <clears throat> Uh, and that is, um, yeah, that, that's, um, one of the real strengths of, of minimalist art is, um, uh, the beauty of the, of the uh, media, natural beauty of the media can be shown off as opposed to, well, I mean, like classical statues of, of Roman generals were, and Caesars were very beautiful, they were of marble, they were also intensely realistic, um, and often very busy with um, insignia and religious, pagan, mythical themes on their armor and all kinds of things, but um, so minimalism is, is, is like very popular in modern art and so but we, we do have um, what does get people talking is modern art which is, seems to be done for shock value and there's um, yeah there's, there's artists who you know, paint themselves nude or do performance art things where they just do gross things with their bodily orifices or they, you know, they pass urine or they defecate or something. Now, I... There is a long tradition, like even in the Bible, to take the Bible, take the prophet, the Old Testament prophets, they were known for doing occasionally quite gross confronting things um, in public, often weird things in public as a way of drawing attention themselves, as a way of symbolizing social ills, greed, religious apostasy, the, the moral corruption of the society. Um, some prophets walked around, you know, for, for, for months on end wearing an old loincloth that must have stank. Um, uh, Ezekiel, you know, the prophet Ezekiel had to lie on his side for, for days on days, on eh, days and days. I mean, he's, um, there was these weird confronting things going on and um, but the thing was with the Old Testament prophets for example is they gave they left they left a body of testimony a body of writings and they gave they gave an interpretation of their, the parable they might have done confronting weird 
eye-catching things in public. For, but they also left bodies of writings where they explained fairly exhaustively the purpose, the meaning, the context of of the performance or the, the sign, as they were known, the sign. And there was pretty much no doubt as to the meaning and the import of what they were doing. Uh, now there has been, well, especially in modern art in the 20th century, there was a great deal of um, existentialism. And um, in the 60s and 70s, <coughs> you couldn't get away from the uh, the old head in the box cliche in um, in in, um, in modern art galleries. Um, the old head in the box was this existentialist cliche about existentialist ontology and epistemology, um, which was about yeah the um, the whole. Um, the whole existential thing about am I just imagining this universe? And, um, is my am I just a head stuck in a little theatre somewhere? Um, so, like twentieth century, such twentieth century artists did have some kind of philosophical baggage driving their art. Um, and one of the most famous, um, obviously, pieces of art of the 20th century, famous modernist, um, modernist, famous, controversial, shocking, but still valued pieces of art was Guernica. Now, Guernica was um, was in um, was in this sort of weird kind of altered state perspective and um, Uh, uh, and Picasso liked to um, have this really strange um, sort of kind of weird distorted jumbling of human faces and, and if you see Guernica you will see the same very weird distorted jumbled things but in Guernica, you see, it was a sort of a, a, a analogy of uh, Guernica was a town that had been the scene of a massacre by of the um, Spanish um, re rebels against the um, against the Spanish nationalists supported by um, the the German by the German Nazis, and so. In a way, you could say that this whole scene of the charnel house of dismembered bodies and burned and charred people and horses and livestock, this whole scene of the carnage after the massacre, um, it's appropriate to put it in some kind of altered state, skewed perspective. Um, and so, so Guernica is a shocking. Uh, Guernica is a shocking um, um, confronting piece of art, but it's also a very powerful and important piece of art because it it expresses a very deep way of expressing the horror of what had happened. Now, but. 
it's a simple logical fallacy to say therefore that anyone who makes a painting or an artwork that is confronting is necessarily um, doing something important. Not everyone who makes art which is confronting is is um is a, is a philosopher or a great social critic or a great prophet. Some people are just confronting. Um, uh, now you see in a lot of um modern art, a lot of people will just attempt to be attempt to be confronted simply by insulting other people's social mores or religious ideas or um, um, the question is um, I, I don't know why in general um, things that are simply confronting are regarded as great art just because they're confronting um, just because you get lots of people talking about it may not be that, that the piece of art is great it might be just confronting um, uh, I mean, um, um, so, I mean, there's lots of famous artwork, like Rothko's type stuff, or, um, abstract art, or conceptual art, or, Formalist, the formalist. I mean, formalist art. A lot of this stuff you hear quite a lot. Of people saying, um, you know, "What is it? You know, this isn't. This doesn't take any skill to make. My kid could do better." Um, uh, and there's supposed to be. But the thing is, and a lot of like Deeth actually says that you know we should want to listen to the artist, but I'm not sure that's useful all the time because an artist may be just trying to confront people, and the deep message in um the artwork is there's no deep message it's just confronting like they i mean modern artists are doing it all the time they're just they're getting christian type images and relics and dumping them in feces or urine or something or they're or they're or they're just um doing something with gag value like um, humans having sex with animals or some kind of cartoon of outrageous sexual acts um, outrageous or um, usually taboo things and and the usual thing we get from artists is there's a message there's a message um, like we should examine the social taboo against bestiality, uh, or and this sort of we get the same thing. We must, we must examine the social taboo against homosexuality, or the social taboo against transgender people, or the social taboo against. Um, 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, or well, just you know, a piece of conceptual art about killing and eating children. Okay. Let's think about that. Why, you know, let's examine the social taboo against this. Why? Why should we examine the social taboo against this behavior? Um, if you get an, an artist who just gets, see this, this whole thing about modern art where you you, you just basically get someone to come into a gallery and walk around the corner or press a button or something and they get a gag. Just a gag. You know, like a, you know, a zebra having sex with a woman or something. You get a gag. A gag and suddenly you gagged people into looking at something they wouldn't normally look at. But that doesn't mean it's good art. Because people react to something and, or talk about something doesn't mean it's good art. Um, I mean, modern artists have been doing gag art for at least a hundred years. And then the, the thing seems to be where you go into the gallery and you see some absurd white canvas with no paint on it. And it's a gag. It's ha ha, trick you. Um, you were expecting a piece of art, classical artwork like the La Mona Lisa, and I walked in and I've got a white canvas. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Tricked you. Oh, you should think about what you think art is. But they've been doing this gag, they've been doing the gag thing for a hundred years. Um, where the whole assumption behind gag art is that you have all these dull middle class bourgeois people who think of art in very sort of um, very kind of um, traditional ways and these dull middle class boring people need to be shaken out of their out of their world um, because I, mean, I don't know why I mean if you get anyone wants a painting a portrait done of their family member they expect it to look realistic they don't want something they don't want something weird and um, like a they want some kind of weird collage of kind of a a plate that's been smashed and put back together and jumbled around and put, put back together in an entirely different way. No, no. Uh, gag art, which there's a lot of gag art around. The problem with it is no one goes to an art gallery, a modern art gallery, not knowing what to expect these days. If people go to a modern art gallery, they're expecting gag art. They're expecting... They're expecting something really stupid, something dressed up as you know, some piece of rubbish off the streets, dressed up as conceptual art. The, the people who go to modern art galleries just expect gag art, abstract art, conceptual art. They, ex they, they, they expect rubbish and they're not surprised if they get rubbish and they don't go away saying, you know, oh, silly me, I thought art was going to be pictures 